From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Down goes the Billings icon. We'll tell you why this demolition project isn't all bad news for village and pizza lovers. As a lifetime Billings resident, very important to me that uh, Village Inn continue on. Plus, I'm finding out what puts the sassy in sassy biscuit. I am absolutely one of the sassiest people you will ever meet <laughs> in a good way. And a shake up at the Laurel Fire Department will tell you why the chief is stepping down. Good morning to you all and welcome to Montana this morning on this Friday, March 3rd. Lots to get to today. First, we begin with breaking news. A multi-day police search is over. The man accused of murdering a Billings woman this week at 12th Street West is behind bars. Officers with the Billings Police Department Street Crimes Unit arrested Terrell Spotted Wolf last night. He's currently in jail on a deliberate homicide charge. Spotted Wolf is accused of killing 48-year-old Susan LaForge, who leaves behind a young son. Park County authorities are searching for answers surrounding the death of a Livingston teacher. Deputies say 55-year-old Katherine Sorensen was accidentally run over by a vehicle on Sunday on Divide Creek Road. She passed away in the hospital. Sorensen taught fourth grade and pre-K to eighth grade music at St. Mary Catholic School. Yesterday, authorities interviewed a woman who stopped along the road and helped Sorensen into a vehicle and to the hospital. They don't believe this person was involved other than to stop and help, but the Park County Sheriff's Office is asking anyone with information on the wreck to contact them at the number you see right now on your screen. The city of Laurel is searching for a new fire chief. Chief Brent Peters resigned this week amidst disagreements with Mayor Dave Wagoner. The men not seeing eye to eye on potential changes to the volunteer force. Peters actually tried to rescind his resignation letter, but Wagoner denied that request. He's going to stay on as a volunteer and says he's hopeful adding a new chief will improve the relationship between the department and the mayor's office. I have a motto that every one of these firefighters heard it when they, they got on the department. What we do is bigger than any one of us. I have to stand behind that and I have to believe in that. So therefore, I'm not fighting this anymore. Uh, we're going to go forward. For now, J.W. Hopper will serve as interim chief. He's been with the department for 16 years and spent the last four as deputy chief. We'll continue to follow that story and many more. Another big story this morning, your weather for the weekend. If you mm -hmm. got plans, Miller, what can people expect? Well, Saturday may be your best opportunity to get outdoors. And then Sunday, we're going to start to see some changes. Winter, uh, it's not going to be a winter storm, but it's going to have winter all written all over. We're going to cool down and we have a chance to see some accumulating snow. Take a step back yesterday on target for the most part with our highs and lows pretty seasonal. Uh, I mentioned we would have a gust uh, at times of over 30 miles an hour. And that's what happened yesterday at the airport. We had a gust over about uh, 32. We'll, we'll see gusts still over 20 miles an hour possible today here in Billings. In terms of the moisture, it's been a dry start to the month. Uh, still, for the most part, we're looking okay for our moisture totals. Our snow totals start to go into the cellar there. Of course, for the year, the season, we're still pacing behind. Some good news is the latest drought monitor came out yesterday and we've seen a, a decent amount of improvement here in Yellowstone County, but still across the Q2 viewing area, we're dry to moderate in some spots. Hang in there. Hopefully we got some wet snow with a lot of moisture uh, attached to it as we get into this weekend. So fingers are crossed on that. We like the snow, but we really like the moisture. A lot of moisture that comes with that snow. 33 right now at the airport feels like 23. Winds out of the west at 16 miles an hour. Temperatures waking up this morning. Some of us milder than normal in the 20s and 30s. Highs today mainly in the 30s. Some areas may not get out of the 20s. Some areas may get into the low 40s. Another seasonal day today and tomorrow. And then we get ready for those changes. We'll take a look at that and more coming up here in just a bit. Alrighty, Miller. Also, we need to tie up the question of the National Day of what oh, if, if our pets, pets had thumbs. Oh, if your thumbs, yeah. It's about imagining what your pets would do if they had thumbs. Oh, that'd be dangerous. That's the purpose. So, Can like, you imagine dogs what doors, your, yes, your dog and our cat, what they would them. do? Yeah. More Whatever damage they than they already create. Uh-huh. Exactly. Wow. All right. Anyway, I just had to put a bow in that yeah, because wanna, I was very <laughs> confused to about wrap that what up, that yeah. meant. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing today? <laughs> We're right. going to have more weather from Miller here in a few. With my opposable With thumbs. With his thumbs. <laughs> Thanks, okay. Have you been to Sassy Biscuit yet? Uh, no, I have not. I think I've had food from there, but okay. I haven't been there directly. Okay. I want to get, I wanna get the, uh, the, uh, the the sausage and gravies. Yes. Stuff. Oh, it looks really good. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I stopped by Sassy Biscuit with Rob to find out more about just what makes it sassy. I think that's what it makes it sassy, is that it's like, Home cook. What are like the signature dishes? Like, what do people order over and It would be like the cobbler, the sojourner, the Julia, the Vinny, and the kitchen sink. 
There's a lot of favorites here. And then on the Benny, how would you like your eggs? The drop biscuits are a foundation of their menu. The fast casual model is a part of the experience. You order at the counter and they take care of the rest. So good. The pineapple looks so good. Yeah, it really kicks it up a notch. It gives it like a different flavor palette. What makes it sassy? A military spouse who lived all over the country brought the best of her experiences to Billings five years ago. My husband uh, is in the Marine Corps and was stationed here. It's a place like none other because of the unique chef that envisioned and encompasses just what makes it sassy. For me, food is what connects everyone because um, number one, if you look at the color of my skin, um, I'm very unique here in Billings, right? Um, not a ton of people when we first came here even knew what half I don't want to say half our cuisine was, but like collard greens and grits. No one understood that or knew, knew what it was. And, you know, even the flavor profiles that we use, very different. Order up. The restaurant tells her story, leaving nothing out. A West Coast brunch aspect from the time her husband was stationed in San Diego. The clock set to important times in her life, an image that's been a part of her family for years. It's like, I want it to be this place where it brings people together. It was like, come eat at the Johnson's. I wanted you to feel like you were in my home eating and being able to experience what, what my black experience was like. So sassy to me is exactly who I am. So I am absolutely one of the sassiest people you will ever meet <laughs> in a good way. But um, yeah, it's just, it just represents me and I hope that through this experience that people can begin to open up their eyes and, and realize that just because you know, I'm different from you and you're different from me, that doesn't mean that we can't come together. That's what makes it sassy. We really enjoyed that. And now in national news, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov met briefly on the sidelines of the G20 summit in India yesterday. The two discussed the war in Ukraine, with the U.S. reportedly lobbying Russia to back down. This is the first meeting between the two since the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Blinken also met with China's foreign minister, and he reiterated that China should not provide weapons or support to Russia for its war efforts. Mortgage rates increased for a fourth straight week. The average 30-year fixed rate has almost doubled since last year. Economists expect more rate hikes from the central bank in the coming months. And another major construction project is underway in Billings. Q2's Alina Howder takes us to a plot of land on the West End, soon to be the host site of countless local events. It's hard to imagine, but this plot of land where I'm standing used to be the Carmike Movie Theater in Billings. It's now being transformed into a 22,500 square foot convention center. And in a few short years, it will have a brand new Marriott Hotel right next door. This will be both the main show and what the main show is looking at. David Vieter's Convention Center on the West End is only about eight months away from completion, and community members can't wait. I get calls now from people who are waiting for it to get opened up. Vieter says there's a significant demand for an event center like his, which will boast seven meeting rooms. The rest of these parking lots go with uh, the event center here. And Alex Tyson, executive director of Visit Billings with the Chamber of Commerce, agrees. Meetings and conventions are probably about 15 to 18 percent of our overall tourism industry in Billings. Tyson says that over 2.6 million people visit Billings each year, spending $620 million in the Magic City. The need is great for both the event center and a new hotel. His hotel next door, that Marriott property, will be very important to us. We have three other hotels right now that are going to to be opening in addition to that. The Marriott Courtyard right next door to the event center will have 137 rooms, but it won't be open for another two to three years. It fits this area very well, and so we're expecting a lot of business from it as well as for it, but also uh, over here at the event center. And Vieter says the event center will be like nothing Billings has seen before. There's ample parking. It's going to be technically very high class. Can't find that really very close to Billings. It'll have a pre-function area, a coffee bar, and will offer catering from local restaurants. And he believes it will be used by folks all over the region. If you do something that's good for people and they like it, uh, and you were really right, it was good for people, good people come. We got a lot of good people here. I think they'll all show up. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News.
Thank you, Alina. We'll continue following that. And state legislators are heading home today from Helena, breaking at the midway point of the 68th session. MTN's Jonathan Ibarian takes us inside the Senate's last marathon session of the first half. It took from 8 a.m. until after 8 p.m., but the Montana Senate got through debate on 70 bills Thursday, wrapping up their work for the first half of the 68th legislative session. 49 senators haven't voted aye, one having voted no. The committee of the whole report has been adopted. After a full day of debates and preliminary votes, the Senate suspended their rules and held final votes on all the bills they advanced, finishing a full day before the transmittal deadline. During their afternoon and evening session, the Senate voted down a proposal to prevent cities and counties from banning short-term rentals, but they did give preliminary approval to a bill that would confirm those rentals as a residential use for zoning purposes and limit how local governments can restrict them. Senators also endorsed a bill that would ban the app TikTok within the state, citing its ownership by a Chinese company and claims that it collected significant data on its users against their will. The company released a response saying those were deeply flawed arguments and calling the bill, quote, an egregious violation of Montanans' free speech rights that will close off Montana from the 100 million strong TikTok community in the United States. The Senate is now on their transmittal break. Leadership says they'll return and gavel in for a brief session on Thursday, then get back into work for the second half of the session. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Thank you, Jonathan. Meanwhile, House lawmakers advanced an abortion bill for a third reading during a marathon on Thursday. The legislation requires medical providers to report any adverse effects the person has following taking a medication to perform an abortion and penalties for failing to report. House lawmakers will be back at it today, and they're going to work closer to that midnight transmittal deadline. Is it the end of an era or a new beginning? Q2's Phil Van Pelt learns there's hope for fans of Village and Pizza, despite the iconic building getting torn down yesterday. What used to be a beloved Billings icon is no more. After 55 years, Village and Pizza was torn down today, but there is hope that its beloved recipes will live on. Just like that, it was gone. Village Inn was demolished Thursday, marking the end of an era. The aura of Village Inn Pizza was undeniably heartfelt. Tyler Cruz and his family are among the many who can't believe it's gone. The restaurant, he says, was part of the fabric of his family. It's a family get-together place. Just walking in the door is like a feeling of walking into, you know, an arena. You know, you get that feeling like, I'm here. It's makes your heart just pump thinking about it. And he's far from the only Billings resident filled with a lifetime of memories of the restaurant. I've actually worked here at our office um, for 44 years next door to Village Inn Pizza. And uh, I just thought Village Inn deserved a big shout out for being such a big part of uh, a lot of Billings. But not all is bad news for fans of the pizza joint. What if I told you that they're not going away? <laughs> Man, that makes me brighten right up, Bob. That's right. Village Inn is here to stay, albeit in a new location. The soon-to-be new owners of CJ's Bar and Grill on Central have purchased the restaurant's recipes and will reopen Village Inn later this year in what is now CJ's Garage. The old restaurant will become an expanded car lot for Dana Motors. It was very important to me uh, as a lifetime Billings resident, very important to me that uh, Village Inn continue on. And if you're wondering about all those amenities so many Village Inn fans loved for years, from the Red Cups to the famous Miss Pac-Man machine, rest assured, they're safe and sound and will be a fixture of the new restaurant. Music to the ears of Tyler Cruz. To know that the Village Inn name hasn't died or didn't cease to exist just yet is very, very uplifting. In Billings, Phil Van Pelt, MTN News.